Okay, quantum theory of light. Um, we looked at the photoelectric effect, uh, and there are other experiments as well that basically confirm that light cannot just be a continuous wave. The results that you see from the photoelectric effect and other such experiments prove that light must be made of, of particles occasionally as well. So we call those particles photons. So all along this wave, you've got little little bundles or little packets of energy, which we call which we call photons. So we can say that light and all other electromagnetic radiations has something called wave particle duality. So it can be a wave sometimes, and then other times it can be a particle. It just decides completely at random um, which of those it wants to be. So that leads us to, to this, um, E equals HF. So each photon has its own wavelength and frequency, just like a wave would. It has the same wavelength and frequency that the, the corresponding wave would. But the energy that each photon has is given by E equals HF. So that basically tells you that the amount of energy that a photon has is directly proportional to its frequency. So if you want to ramp up the energy of a wave or ramp up the energy of a photon, then you increase uh, the frequency. That ties in with what we talked about earlier, about gamma rays and x-rays and stuff up the, the top end of the electromagnetic spectrum having more energy and being more dangerous because the frequency is higher, so therefore the photons, each individual photon, has more energy. Planck's constant is just a, a random number that Max Planck came up with, and um, that's another uh, number that, that really determines how much energy uh, each photon has. So if we kind of relate that to uh, an experiment that we've already done. The photoelectric effect, you know, with the gold leaf electroscope, we shone white light onto a zinc surface. And the energy of that photon was not enough to release an electron. If we increase the irradiance of that radiation, in other words, how many waves or how many photons are falling on that surface, it didn't matter doesn't make any difference because the photons don't have that required energy. E equals HF is not equivalent to the, to the value required to, to kick those electrons out. However, if we then use ultraviolet light instead, ultraviolet light is of a higher frequency, so it therefore has enough energy to cause the electrons to be released. And that can be explained by E equals HF because it then shows that energy that a photon has is equivalent to the frequency. So if you increase the frequency of the radiation, then you increase the, the energy that each individual photon has. So we used zinc because it was easier to release an electron from zinc. When we used chromium, in other words, without any metal on the top of the surface of the electroscope, it wasn't enough um, to eject any electrons from that. So we can say that because it's harder to eject um, electrons from chromium, than it is from zinc, that chromium has a higher work function than, than zinc does, or zinc has a lower work function than, than chromium. A work function is a measure of how easy it is to eject an electron to the surface. So it's the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron. If you put that energy into that metal, then it will be just enough to make it come out to the surface. It will not move beyond the surface, but just enough to eject it and no more. So if the energy that your photon has e equals HF is greater than the work function here, then you will get photo emission. You will get photo electron, electrons being spat out. If the energy of that photon e equals HF is less than the work function, the minimum amount of energy required to release an electron, then you get no photo emission there. So we can say that the energy that the photo electron has when it emerges from the surface of a metal um, is equal to the energy the photon has originally minus the work function. So it gives up that amount of energy it has to give that amount of energy to the metal to, in order to, to liberate that electron, to move that electron. And how much energy is required there, how much that work function is, is dependent upon what the metal is and how tightly bound the, the individual electrons are to the atom. So we can calculate the kinetic energy that the electron has. You know, once it emerges from this surface and starts to head off, we can figure that out. It's just the difference between the energy the photon had originally minus the work function that it's given up to the metal. So we can express that in another way, HF minus HF0, where F0 is the threshold frequency. It's the minimum frequency required for photo emission. So in the case of zinc, you know, it's some sort of frequency that's in the ultraviolet range. <coughs>